after the dismissal prayer, we had the gunshot. When I had the gunshot coming closer, then I have to run to the altar to lie down on the altar beside the tabernacle. So they entered inside, they start shooting both small and both young and old. A man came towards the altar with something on his hand. It's blue and black color. It dropped it beneath my head. I never knew the man has not gone. So I raised up my eyes. The both of us eyes jammed together. And I told me that me that's looking at him now, that I go see say I could die. Ah, I, I was like the brother beside the brother beside me now have to tell me to shoot my head from that place. Then it's better if you hit my leg than my head. Then immediately I shoot my head. From that place, the brother was trying to use his leg to kick the thing out. So immediately he kicked the thing out, the thing just blew and he splashed on my leg. After the bullets got finished, they started throwing bombs inside the church. They started throwing bombs, bombs, bombs. The devil shot me at my hand there, at my buttons. The devil shot me at my leg too. So I'm so grateful to God that I'm alive. I started running. Then I was pregnant through this event. I lose my unborn child. I had a gunshot on my back and my bottom. That's how I can remember before I was took, taken to the hospital. So they shot the bullet. They fired it from outside. And that was the one that hit my chest. And from my chest came out from my stomach. After the memorial service held in honor of those who lost their lives at St. Francis Catholic Church or were in Ondo State, Legit TV visited the Federal Medical Center FMC in Owo and spoke with some of the survivors of the attack. Let's hear what they have to say about the unfortunate incident. My name is Okonya Stephen Chooks, the choir master of the church. When we are about to close the mass, the priest had already said, uh, given the final blessing, and said, go in peace, the mass is ended. Why he went to kiss the altar in the normal Catholic way. Then we were already standing at the choir stand to, to start the closing him. All of a sudden, we heard three sounds, like the sound of pistol. Then those at the back looked outside. We are looking outside through the window to see what was actually happening. Then immediately we heard another sound that looked like the sound of a bomb. Then everybody started running for shelter. Then we ran. For me, I ran into the choir room with some other persons. Then after that bomb, the shooting continued. The shooting, it was now continuous shooting. Like people were running, people were shouting, the shooting come at every interval they were throwing bombs. Then as the shooting continued, where I was hiding with some other persons, all of a sudden the bullets hit my chest. No, another one hit my hand, but I didn't feel the one that hit my hand, but it was the one that feel that hit my chest. Then I I staggered and fell somewhere in that room. Then, as the shooting continued, I just tried to use my left hand to check my chest, and there was blood everywhere on my body, on my stomach, on my chest. And started running. Then I was pregnant through this event. I lose my unborn child. I had a gunshot on my back and my bottom. That's how I can remember before I was took, taken to the hospital. Were you, were you in church alone that day or you were with your husband? And if you have any other child, were you in church? I was with my baby, the one I was carrying, two years and six months baby. He was still injured. He was injured on her leg. She was injured on her leg. My, the other, my other children, they escaped. Like you said, you were, one, you were pregnant and 
Now, you lost the pregnancy. How do you feel? I don't have anything to say. I thank God for my life, for the life of my other children that God kept alive for me and they rescued them for me. My name is John Gloria. I was in the church when the incident happened. Everybody was warning me. I hide under the chair. I was praying to my God, that God, please save me, save me, save me. So everybody was kind, praying to God, Daddy. So, after the bullets got finished, they started throwing bombs inside the church. They started throwing bombs, bombs, bombs. The devil shot me at my hand there, at my bottles. The devil shot me at my leg too. So, I'm so grateful to God that I'm alive. I also learned that your mother-in-law and you were also in church with your son. At that time, knowing that your son was also in church with you, what were the things that were going through your mind? Mm, things that were going through my mind is that I was I, I don't I was praying to God that God should save me, save my child and my mother-in-law, and thank God, my child and my mother-in-law were saved that day. When I got to the altar, they have to ask me, I have to lie down on the altar beside the tabernacle. So they entered inside, they start shooting, both small and both young and old. They were shooting everybody. So a man came towards the altar with something on his hand. It's blue and black color. He dropped it beneath my head like this. I never knew the man has not gone. So I raised up my eyes and I looked to the man, the both of us eyes jammed together. And I told me that, me that's looking at him now, that I go see, say I could die. Uh, I was like, the brother beside, the brother beside me now have to tell me to shoot my head from that place. Then it's better I should hit my leg than my head. Then immediately I shoot my head from that place. The brother was trying to use his leg to kick the team out. So immediately kick the thing out, the thing just blew and it splashed on my leg. Then, at every interval they were throwing bombs, people were running. I also heard that, though I did not see them because I was hiding in that room. But the bullet came in through the external door. There is an, a door they don't open at all. That's permanently locked, leading to that choir room. So they shot the bullet, they fired it from outside. And that was the one that hit my chest and from my chest came out from my stomach. Then, while we were there, while I was there gasping for breath, and while the shooting continued, they even launched a bomb on top of the ceiling where we were hiding. And the bomb exploded on the ceiling, and the ceiling fell on top of us. Then, we also heard a very loud sound that looked like the sound of a dynamite on the altar in the church. Yeah. Then, at the, after that sound, after that dynamite sound, we didn't hear any sound again. Then I managed to stagger out to the sacristy. While I was coming to the sacristy, my eye was able to, I was able to peep into the main church. It was smoked like dew was falling. There was, I could not see anything. Then I was, at that point, I was shout, um, gasping for breath, begging someone, anybody to take me to the hospital. And it was the, the priest who celebrated the mass who rushed me down to this place. I heard some people jump the fence, some white jumping the fence, they were killed. Some persons also ran outside, some hid under the pew, some of them, their legs were shot. While some were killed directly in the church there. But I did not see them. Seeing yourself that you are alive and um, you are recovering in the hospital, how does this make you feel? Mm, I give glory to God because for me, every night I meditate the thing going on my head like, like someone is throwing a bomb because they threw so much bomb, so many, at every interval, why they shoot, they throw bomb. So, to me, I think it's a miracle because the doctor said it was few centimeters to the heart for me, for my, for where they shot. But the bullet went this way, came out from the stomach. 
So seeing myself in the hospital is a miracle because even before the priests rushed me to the hospital, I had already started final confession. Like I thought I was already dead. So would you say, would you, say you still trust the security system in the state? In the state, you mean Nigeria as a whole? As far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, the country has no security. The shooting and the bombing lasted for more than 20 minutes, and no security personnel came to that place. And I heard there is a police station close to the palace because the church is at the back of the palace. So I don't trust the security. I even just not to speculate, or but I see this as more like a game. Like they are playing politics, so I don't really know what they are trying to to do. But for the security, there is no security system in Nigeria. I don't. I don't trust it. The security is very low. It's very low. Covered. Would you still want to go to church on Sunday? Yes. This one does not mean I should not go to church. At least, by the, it's because of God's grace that I'm still alive today. To talk today. I can also see my sisters today. Most most people do not have the privilege that I have. To. Oh, what? It's not going to keep me alive. Many lost their life, their children. So who am I to say I will not serve God again? Yes, so I will still go back to church. Because I can't because of this thing that happened to me. Sit at home. Or just lose my hope. I will still go back to church because I'm so grateful to God that I'm alive. My my son or mother-in-law was alive too. Even the people that surrounded me that day, they were all dead. Even I was even lying on top of one dead woman because that day I was unconscious. Before those people came in and took me to the hospital. I'm so grateful to God. Looking back at the health sector, with the level of treatment that you've been given here, would you say the health, the health um, sector has improved or are you satisfied with the health, with, what's, with how they've treated you so far? Yes. When I was rushed down to that emergency unit, so many doctors surrounded me and they attended to me, though I was there for a while. But my cousin also works here, so when he came, when he, he heard it, he came and my daughters came immediately and attended to me and they rushed me to the, to the theater for surgery. Then located me to this ward. I've been going for x-rays and scan. The doctors here and the nurses, especially the nurses in this ward, have been doing all their best to make sure that everything is normalized. Thank you very much.